Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Texas Pacific Land Trust stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Texas Pacific Land Trust owns over 900,000 acres of land in 20 West Texas counties. It is one of the largest private landowners in Texas. Revenue comes from land sales, oil and gas royalties, grazing and sundry leases, interest on notes receivable, and interest on investments. The trust does not actively seek to sell its land holdings, and on rare occasions it purchases land. The last time was in 2008, acquiring 640 acres from the state of Texas in a parcel adjacent to its existing land. In June 2017, it established Texas Pacific Water Resources LLC. That's a wholly owned subsidiary of the trust. That entity is a full service water business that offers brackish water sourcing, water recycling, and other water services. The company generates a bulk of its revenue from contracts called non-participating royalty interests. This means for every bit of oil that is pumped and sold out of their land, they receive a royalty payment. A non-participating royalty interest means the company does not have to drill or invest in infrastructure. They just get a cut of the profits. Also, when someone wants to build a pipeline or road or anything on their land, then TPL receives a payment for that as well. This is called an easement. They also receive money from water sales and royalties from its water subsidiary that started in 2017. The company is headquartered in Dallas, Texas and was founded in 1888. It started trading in 1968 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 9 billion market cap. They're trading at 11.62 a share and they have 8 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They have positive free cash flow each year, peaking in 2019. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also positive peaking in 2019. The company's profits and stock price are highly dependent on the price of oil and the demand for oil. If the price of oil starts rising, you can expect their revenue and profits to increase. Same thing with their stock price and vice versa if the price of oil starts decreasing. Revenue is a sales for the company and that's pretty consistent peaking in 2019. And you can see this is a really high margin business. Their net profit margin is 60%. That's net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. A 20% net profit margin is considered good. 60% is amazing. That's because they're a trust and they mainly just collect royalty payments. Their expenses are pretty low. The companies that are drilling and processing the oil on its land, they bear all the expenses. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Here's a breakdown of their 2020 revenue. So about half their revenue comes from oil and gas royalties. 13% is from easements. This is when you grant another party to build something onto your property. They also have water easements at 17%. Land sales and operating revenue, that's 6%. And 35% of their revenue comes from their water operations. So this was a good addition to the company. It helps them diversify more and not become so dependent on oil. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. They have really high gross profit margins, about 90%. Gross profit margin is gross profit over revenue. Below that is their operating expenses, then their operating income. They don't have any debt, so there's no interest they have to pay in their debt. Since they have positive cash flow, they rarely add land or acquire other businesses. So that's why they don't need much debt to run their business. They could do it all on their cash flows. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which looks pretty good. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. So they have a good amount of operating cash flow each year. Then you have capital expenditures. This is mainly related to their water operations. Operating cash flow minus CapEx give you your free cash flow. About half their free cash flow goes towards their dividend payment. They pay a 1% dividend. 
This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 547 million of equity and they only raised 78 million from issuing stock. That's because they bought back so much stock. They have 2.5 billion in treasury stock. So when a company buys back stock off the open market, it places those shares on their balance sheet as treasury stock. And this is a contra equity account. So it acts the opposite of a traditional equity account. So since it's a positive number, you have to minus it to get the equity number. The company bought back a lot of stock starting in 2010. It was around 9.7 million shares outstanding. Now it's down to 7.7 .7 million. That's another way to reward shareholders to buy back stock. That decreases the shares outstanding in the market, making your shares more valuable. It's also better tax-wise for the investor when a company buys back stock as opposed to paying a dividend. And they profited $552 million from running their business. Retain earnings as a sum of all your prior net incomes minus the sum of all the dividends you paid out. Let's look at the capital structure. $547 million of equity, $2 million of debt. So they're 100% equity. And they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. Their net debt is negative $327 million. And their weighted average cost of capital is 7.36%. That's their whack according to Simply Wall Street. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 8.9 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $7.7 .7 billion. We divide that by 8 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 9.95. They're trading at 11.62, so they're trading at a 17% premium. It's a sell according to the model. I did a video of this company over a year ago when they were trading at 584 and my calculation was 892. But back then the stock was undervalued, now it's overvalued. That's just what happens when the price of something goes up. It's like if you go to the store and you wanna buy a dozen eggs, if it's $1, no problem, you'll get a dozen eggs. And if it's $10, that's a bit steep, but you really like eggs, so maybe you'll buy it. If it's $100, you're definitely not buying it. You'll find something else to eat. That's just how supply and demand works. As something comes up in price, the less likely you are to buy it. As something comes down in price, the more likely you are to buy it. The average analyst projects their revenue to grow 22.6%. I grew their revenue 22.6% each year for the next four years. To calculate their future free cash flows, I need to figure out what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. So I summed up these four free cash flow numbers and I divided by these four revenue numbers. That came out to 57%, so they convert 57% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied all my future revenue estimates by 57%. That's how I got my future free cash flow numbers. Simply Wall Street values the company at 1265, so they're saying the stock is undervalued. One analyst priced this stock and their price target was $800. This is where the stock has been trading the last 12 months. So if you got it before 2021, you could have made a nice return. It is starting to regress a little bit, but the good thing is the company's not so dependent on oil. There's a lot of political risk when you're investing in an oil company. About one third of their revenue is from water, so they're more diversified now. They pay a 1% dividend. They pay out 43% of their net income and 44% of their free cash flow. So they could raise the dividend if they wanted to. Their industry pays a 4.5% dividend. Although analysts are forecasting this company to raise their dividend to 2% in the next three years. This stock is pretty volatile. It has a beta of 2.28, so the stock moves more than two times the market. It's gone up 140% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P went up 27%. The 52-week low was 439, the high was 17.74. And the stock is on a decline. It's trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. On average, the past 10 days, 39,000 shares were traded. Pretty much all the shares outstanding are on float. 57% are held by institutions and 4% of the shares on float are shorted. Analysts are really bullish on this company, projecting their earnings to grow 38%, their revenue to grow 23%. They didn't have a lot of employees in 2015 and 16, but with the water operations, they now have over 100 employees. If you put $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $330,000 today. That's an amazing return on investment. Horizon Kinetics is the biggest shareholder at 20%. The CEO of this company was co-founder of Horizon, then Vanguard, BlackRock, First Manhattan, and SoftVest. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their price multiples have gotten a lot worse since their market cap has come up so much. 
The last time I did this video, their price multiples were really good. Now that PE is pretty high at 45, price to sales at 27, and price to book at 17. Much worse than the market median and average. They have a high return on invested capital of 89%, a really good ROE at 36%. So even though they have bad price multiples, they're providing their investors a great return on their investment. A really high current ratio and quick ratio. They have over $300 million of cash on their balance sheet, 67 million of receivables and 100 million of inventory. So the company is really well capitalized. They had 194 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, 469 million of working capital, and they pay out 85 million in dividend payments. So they have $578 million of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 18 companies in the same industry as TPL. And most oil and gas EMP companies do the work, do the drilling, the fracking. So there's a lot of operational risk when you invest in those companies. But when you invest in this company, it's kind of different. They just collect royalty payments. They don't have that operational risk. Just something to think about when you compare ratios. So their price multiples are worse than average. They have a really good current ratio. They have a really solid ROE. They have no debt. And they're bigger than the average company, 9 billion market cap. The average is 7 billion. And their dividend is pretty close to average. To summarize, I have them trading at a 17% premium. And if you want to get exposure into oil, this is a good way to do it. Plus, it's less risky than investing in an oil or gas company that does the actual drilling. A third of their revenue comes from their water operations. Clean and healthy drinking water is getting more and more important. Not just in developing countries, but sometimes in the U.S., people get sick or die from drinking water. And the current system is overloaded with trying to clean the water. To have companies like this assist the government trying to purify the water, it benefits everybody, including the environment. I rank their free cash flow is 7 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.